All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Minecraft, my survival single, par single player. Oh, Lordy, you know it's going to be a great day when I can't even pronounce the first few words. Single player series. And today it is episode 25, 25 episodes. I did not mean to switch hands which means we are going to be doing a small world tour of everything I have done so far. So far. Now, when I first started this game, I picked this seed because it had a village nearby, so if I want to play with villagers later, which I will eventually, I can and I have an easy access available right here. However, I turned my attention as soon as I got here to a mushroom island. That mushroom island, hold up, is right there. I know, you can't even tell it's a mushroom island anymore. Maybe because I like totally got rid of all the mycelium and completely like got rid of it and made it grass. Yeah, that was that was pretty much exactly why it doesn't look like a mushroom island anymore. But when I first started, I started here, right around here somewhere for spawn. I ran around, I got some food from these guys so I wouldn't die. And then I just went down this path and ran up that hill. This hill is actually part of the Mushroom Island as well. But it's also great because there's plains right here. So we have sheep, we have horses, we had cows, and of course we have the Mushroom Cows readily available as well. And in case you can't tell, we do have a shader pack on right now. Which is why everything looks a little bit better than normal. <laughs> but so let's go ahead and fly up here. We are in creative mode right now. Just so that I can give you guys a tour of everything. Now the first thing that I did on this Mushroom Island was try to build myself a house. So I came running through here, I had great plans for everything, and my starter house was actually right down here. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Right here, this was my starter house. This was actually a giant hole in the ground originally that led into a cave system below when I decided to fill it all in and create my house above it. I had a lot of inspiration for these, for these, for this whole town from Elder Scrolls. Basically, I love playing, I love the architecture of Altmers. So I went ahead and I decided to try to base this off of the houses I saw in Elder Scrolls online, which is why this guy, as you can tell, is slightly curved. It's got a little chimney on it. It just reminds me a lot of the arches that they would have. Although in Minecraft, this is the best we can do with arches. Inside, I still haven't done much to it, in case you can't tell. Literally, I have not done much. I used to have a bed over here, and that was about it, honestly. These used to be smelters until I turned fire spread off and put the real fireplace there. So I still need to do some interior design work on everything here. But this was also where I started mining out everything. As you can tell, there's still mycelium in some places. This became my nether portal room. I used this to mine out copious amounts of stone and dirt in the beginning. If you can't tell, this leads all the way down to my mines down here. But I pretty much abandoned it quickly once I started my own. Oh, hey, look, there's a hole in the ceiling. Oh, well. Once I started my own, um, what's it called? My own official tunnel to the mines. Then we have our portal here. I haven't done anything. Literally, I've done nothing. Oh, shaders makes this look so sketchy. Oh, this is bad. Oh, well. But I haven't done anything to this portal at all. The only thing I've done in the in the nether is, where is it? I've made a pathway here. Do, 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 do. This is about the only thing I actually have done. I need to start working on the nether portal in um, future episodes. Oh, we're still going. Oh, geez. I tried to dig up as high as I could to get as close as I could to the bedrock ceiling so that everything would be safe. Where am I? This way. There we go, let's fly through it, all the way down here. My god, I went a very long, long way with this tunnel. This looks like I'm in like, end of the world, or like, don't go to the light at the end of the tunnel, you're just gonna die, type scenario. I don't wanna die, no. That gas outside is creeping me out though, just to say the least. Are we almost there? I feel like this has been going on forever. Almost? I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh, it glitched. Hello, and I made this one portal. Just this one. This is the only one I've actually made to bring me out to a jungle biome. 
Oh, there's a village here. I didn't see that village last time. Wow. So it pops me out here, and I basically like, created this weird staircase down. I just needed to get a bunch of jungle saplings as well as cocoa beans. And the cocoa beans are super important because I'd use it for my brown concrete powder for all my pathways. So it's been very helpful to have this guy on hand. This is the closest jungle I could find. Wow, I did not realize there was another village though. I should come out and explore this later. It's actually not that bad looking. Oh, all the little villagers. And there's a ton of flowers. Is there a flower forest somewhere nearby? Is that possible? No? I'm not sure. That jungle is huge though, to say the least. Look at all these pigs! There's like so many pigs going on right now. Oh my god. Okay, well I'm gonna get back home real quick and then I'll be right back with you guys. Alright, we are back to our base. Once I had finished building this house as my main residence, I needed some cows for food. So of course I got a bunch of mushrooms in here. And I breeded them up like crazy, and then I found regular cows. Actually, no, I didn't find regular cows. I learned that, let's let's do an example real quick together as a, as a family. If you take shears on a mushroom cow, they become a regular cow. Isn't that awesome? So I went ahead and I made a few of them regular cows just so I could breed them up and have both colors in their pens. But I just thought it was just the most awesome idea ever in the world to have. I was like, that's perfect. So there we go. Let's go back. Nope, that's not what I want. Let's exit out of here. Back to F. There we go. And so I built these two pens here for the sheep. I made them all the colors of the rainbow that I could possibly get to by breeding. And of course the cows too. I just, I really love how this looks like a natural pen of sorts and yet it's not. But it, it works. It works. It still looks good too. And then I turned my attention to farms, because this was going to be the farming district part of this island. So farms became next, which led me to this. I had this idea after I watched Brian and he gave, like, a but there's a sheep over there. That sheep. I'm going to come for you, sheep. You're going to, you're going to, he's going to, he might die later. We'll see. But I watched an episode that Grian had done about different ideas for farms, and he showed me, he showed, he did a layered farm project, and I immediately fell in love with the idea of layered farms, so I went ahead and I did my own take on it, as you can tell. It also worked because I continued the cobblestone theme throughout. So this whole thing used to be one giant hill, like there was no layers to it at all, so I had to carve out and do the layers myself. This original area was where I first started right here. Love it. I extended it down there along the side of the mountain, and then I went ahead and I leveled out each layer of the mountain. Let's go ahead and just walk through it like normal people. As you can see, I have radishes, potatoes, uh, sugarcane, that's what that's called, and wheat. And by the sugarcane, I have one little block of water. So wherever you see sugarcane, it's actually, uh, okay, it's actually my water sources, which keep everything growing nicely. It works perfectly, I think. And then we come all the way up here go around a little bit and then we have another layer here we can go up one more time and we have another layer this layer wraps around the most and has like the largest land over here if I could get there let's go let's go let's go perfect see and then we even have a little gate leading us to the main pathway here that takes us around the entire farming area then we also have of course that windmill that windmill is one of my favorite things I've ever designed here in Minecraft I think I created it next. I either did the windmill next or, oh my god, I apologize for the glitches. I either did the windmill or I did, what's it called? What is it called? Either the windmill or some house, extra houses down below. Oh, this camera. What's up with the camera? Is it, I don't know, it might just be the shaders. But the windmill. Here we go. I just, I love how this turned out and made it look like it's actually moving. It's just so freaking gorgeous. At least I think it is. It just, and it takes the cake. When you look at the entirety of the farmlands we have here, having the windmill on top, it just works. It just works so well. I almost wish though that I had turned it and had the, uh, what's it called? The actual windmill part on this side so that it was overlooking the farm. But hey, we live and we learn. We live and we learn. 
The next thing I believe I made are these houses down here. I was trying to finish up the farming district as quickly as possible. Let's go down. So we created these two little houses here, this one and then that one right through here. They both have the same design pretty much. You just And I haven't done the interiors yet. That's another episode that I need to do. And they all have second stories as well. And when we fly up, you can see that I went ahead. As you can see, I added some little like dormitories to it to make it look even better and just super cute. Then we created the barn. And the barn is also something else I'm quite proud of. I just love the way it looks with the sandstone and the birch. Oh god, this camera. And it's just, I just love it all together. I, again, have not done the interiors either. But I think a combination of the andesite and the different stone variants, as well as the uh, birch and the sandstone, just came together really well. After I finished the farming area, actually, no, I didn't finish it. After I did those houses at the farming area, I created the poor farmers, which are down here. They have their own little community basically on the other side of the farms. It's definitely poor compared to everyone else. They got wood, wooden shacky houses pretty much. And they just basically live in off the land because they're farmers. Get it? Makes sense? Yeah. And then down here we have a few more houses as well. Just some little shacks hanging out down here by the ocean. Yeah, and then after that, we started my next big project, which let's just fly up there. Hello. Here we go. My next big project that I did were the guard towers that you see all throughout the island. Those took forever to build. Absolutely forever to build, but I'm so proud I was able to manage to get them done. So right up this pathway, as you can see, we kind of see it through the trees going on here. Looking gorgeous is this giant guard tower. Let's go ahead and just fly up to the top real quick. And take a look at it from here too, because you can't really see it through the trees anymore. But yeah, I just, I really love the idea of this guard tower and I wanted it to act almost like the Lord of the Rings when they have the towers that they would light on fire for the beacons. But I wanted them to be throughout the island so that they could see each other from each point. So this one is the main one that overlooks most of the island. We have one over there by the mining district. We have another over here, which is going to be the fishing district right below us, this whole area. Then we have in the background, this one in the distance is the farthest corner of the island. That also looks over the village. This one is for the farming district as it just kind of stares at them. This one down there is going to be our main port of entry. We're going to have some shops down there eventually. And then we have one more over there at the edge of the forest that also acts as one of the ocean, main ocean ones. I just honestly, they look awesome. Like, it looks like a normal island, but then you can tell they have some type of wealth because of these towers. Obviously, they have some type of power. Then I turned my attention to this giant forest. So mushroom islands don't actually grow trees, they just grow mushrooms, of course. And I kept that theme going by keeping the, the red mushrooms everywhere, although I edited them a bit so that they looked a bit more fantasy-like. But I went ahead, it took me quite a long time, and I removed all the mycelium at once using the water trick that Exumavoid had talked about, where you just dump buckets of water in all night and then the mycelium will go away. And then I planted a few patches of grass here and there and got rid of the stubborn ones that were left over. Then, after I redid the grass, I went around and I planted all of these trees. All of these trees were hand planted by me and I used bone meal like crazy to grow them up. And then I even went ahead so far as to create a little uh, lake right there in the middle as well as that broken down, not broken down, that ruined altar that we're going to go look at right now. And of course, along the main pathways, I have hidden lighting everywhere. I have a few off-trail pathways that don't have hidden lighting, so if you wanted to explore it, you'd be able to actually have some darkness and some mood lighting going on. But these, as you can tell, this is the main pathway, and we got torches hidden. All right, so if we come through here, this is one of our off-road um, paths, and it takes us through the middle of all these trees. Oh, would you look at that? 
That looks gorgeous. Here we go. This is supposed to be like a ruined altar that came here by the people who lived here before. The actual island was inhabited by whoever these people are, probably elves that I'm, that's at least what I've been going with. And that this is just an altar that they would do for sacrifices and whatnot. And I honestly just love the way it looks. It just blends in so well. You can tell it's ruined with all the different things going on with it. And when the only light that you see at night when you come down here are the torches from the altar. It just, it's so moody. I, I love it. It's just so moody. So good. And this took me quite a while to do, of course, all the different trees and everything like that. Now, real quick, before we go any farther, let's set the time. All right, we set the time back to daylight so we can go and look at the last few parts that we have left of this island so far. We come through here and there's a couple main ways to get to the mining district. You can come over this bridge here and walk down and around. Then you pop out on this side and we have a pathway that leads you all the way down, like a so. Or the other main pathway, there's going to be three pathways. This is one of them. Another pathway is that tunnel over there that leads to the main uh, walkway we have over there. And then we're going to also do a dock system, which let me just fly over there. This is the next project that we're going to be working on next week, is creating a dock right here. It's going to have a giant retaining wall connecting from here all the way to here. And it'll just be a straight wall with docks standing out of it. And we're going to have on that retaining wall a pathway that connects the mining to the fishing area. And that'll be gorgeous when it's done. But we have these three little mining huts. Basically the idea I wanted for these houses is that they're miners. So the half of their house has actually been in, a, in the hill that they have mined out for themselves. These ones I actually did decide to finish and complete the interior. Which is great because it actually gives it a lived-in feel with some paintings and everything like that. This is the most recent project that we were actually able to finish here on this, I think episode 24? Yeah, that sounds about right. Then over here, as you can see, we walk down. I haven't finished this pathway yet, but we walk down to my mines. I love this little entrance. You can tell it's just kind of like put in there. And this I am in love with. I love the design I created with the depth that it gives, and I just repeating it every few or so, so you see it as you go down. Oops. And then down here, we have two doors. This door, first and foremost, leads me to my skeleton spawner and up to the middle of the forest. And then over here is my enchanting area with some extra storage that also leads me down to my super smelter, which is just a simple little cart, mine cart with a chest. And then I also have a little hidey hole down here I like to get through. I still have to finish the tunnel all the way down here. I haven't gotten around to that yet, mostly because I haven't designed the rest of the mine shafts yet, but we'll get to that eventually. And then here, this is where everything comes out when I actually mine it, when I mine it, when I super smelt it up, so I can just collect everything here, while I stand here and AFK for skeletons that drop through there and land here, and I just repair, well, the only thing that has mending that I have right now is actually my pickaxes, so I can't repair too much. I need to do a fishing, uh, What's it called? A uh, AFK fishing farm. That's what. That's my next challenge is to create an AFK fishing farm because I'm really tired of only having two things with mending on it. That's the next step. And then over here we have one more house on the right as well as my little storage area, just an outdoor storage of the different ores that we collect as well as bone blocks because the whole idea is that the people came here because they wanted to study why skeleton, not why skeletons, why Creatures of the night, you know, creepers, zombies, skeletons, spawn on the other islands, but not on Mushroom Islands. And then while they were here, they stumbled upon the skeleton spawner, which they're now using to observe the skeletons more and figure out why they randomly appear the way they do. But all the while, you might as well make profit of it, because you're not going to be able to live here if you don't make a profit off of something. So they sell these bone blocks as building materials to the other, their main parts of their country, or at least to other people. And yeah, that pretty much takes care of the mining district. And the last thing that I built just last episode was this little tunnel here, which like I said, connects to the main road that we have going on. And you just head right through here. We got so much depth going on in different types of cobblestone and andesite and stone brick variants that I just am in love with it and all the variations. And like I said, it leads you out right here to the middle. Oh, I'm stuck on a tree. To the middle of our fork in the road, pretty much. And yeah, that's
that about does it. I wish this camera wasn't freaking out so much. But that about does it for this episode, you guys. Oh my god, that does not. I completely forgot about this section. This guy is my main residence. How could I forget about this? I built this shortly after I did the I finished the farming district. And I am it is large. It took me forever to get through it and to figure out what I wanted to do and how to detail it. As you can tell, we have this super large well right in front of it that is meant to be like a community well because this is going to be the main fork in the road that takes you down to uh, the shops that we're going to have down here by the port of entry. But, God, this camera is so annoying. I don't know what's wrong with it today. But, oh, where am I? Wrong button. So I went ahead and I built everything like, oh shoot, I forgot I was in spectator mode. I built it, I added this cute little pond here that has a river that comes out of the actual side of the mountain right here. Oh my god, the camera. What is happening? And then in here, maybe it'd be better if I was just in the It's not too much better to be fair. In here we have my main bedroom. This is most of my storage. We have a bath area here for an actual bathtub. And then we have, of course, more storage down here. This is purely inspiration from an Altmer embassy that they have in Elder Scrolls Online. As you come through here, we have some servants' quarters right underneath this staircase. Ah, uh, no. How did I... There we go. Some servants' quarters with their own little hangout, hangout area. Storage closet area. Oh my god, come through here. We have, of course, our main dining hall table area. I am getting hungry. I don't have any food. That's weird. Now I do. Ah! Perfect. This is, of course, our kitchen. I often use this a lot more instead of my auto smelter. And then upstairs, I haven't actually finished the entire interior here yet either. We come up here, we have more servants' quarters, a little deck out front. Out front. Of course, some lounge chairs, more servants' bedrooms up here, more storage. Oh, look at the shaders glitch on the armor. Ooh. This is supposed to be the main desk. I forgot I had a, a map up here. Oh my god, this map is freaking out, though. Let's, we're gonna have to look at that without shaders. I need to update that. It doesn't even have the forest on there yet. Yep, I need to update that really bad. And then we come out here, and we have some more areas. These are meant to be, like, uh, entertaining areas. And, of course, a little library on the side. Now, my pride and joy of everything that I forgot to show you guys. I can't believe I forgot about it. right down here. So we have a pathway that just leads into this random underground area-ish. It was a cave that I had right underneath and I wanted to make it useful instead of just covering it up. So I made, I turned it into a, a washing area for clothes slash people as well, all hidden underneath the ground. So if we head down here, I did so much detail work on this guy. I love it. You come through here, we have like a miniature little washing area for other people that don't have their own bathhouses with, of course, hot water. Come down here, we have some more as well. And then when you pop up here, oh my god, the lag. Weird, because on my computer it doesn't show any lag, it's just the recording. Weird. Okay, how about we do... Shaders off. Everything is so much more smooth now. Oh my god. All right, now that everything's smoother, you can see all the detail I put in here. But yeah, so we have our little washing area down here. These are supposed to be clothes on the wall that are getting dried off and washed in the water everywhere. And I just, I love it. I freaking love this little thing. It's like the coolest thing I think I've ever built in Minecraft. Do do do. And then we can climb back up here. 
to see our nice little waterfall. And this waterfall goes down through the ground and pops out here onto the main, uh, this will be the main port of entry, like I said. But yeah, that about does it for this episode, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I am really looking forward for everything that there is to come with this land, because we still got to do, like I said, the fishing district has to get done, and of course we got to get done our main point, oh, of our main part of town in the city right below us in the port of entry. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and if you have any comments or anything you'd like to see, please let me know down below. And as always, I'll see you guys all in the next episode. Bye guys.